Hey, hey Thomas, how's it going there today? What's going on? Well, great to connect. Been a longtime fan and follower of your career. I think it started with the Geico commercial. When you did that, did you know that that was going to be just a big campaign that had people talking? No, I actually had no idea. I, uh, I had gotten the audition and it said that, you know, I had to wear green tights and I had to, you know, do crazy things in the room. And, you know, a, lot, a part of me really didn't you know, feel comfortable with, like, wearing tights. <laughs> uh, I was like, no way, I'm wearing tights. Uh, but I ended up just going to the audition in a green T-shirt and uh, improvised a little bit and ended up getting it. Didn't really think anything of it when we were filming it. I mean, it was really fun, but uh, didn't really hit me how big it got until obviously it came out. And when did you have that versus landing the role in Wet Hot American Summer? So I did that Geico commercial, and I think I was 11 at the time. Um, and not shortly after did I do Wet Hot, and they kind of both came out at the same time, which was really cool. Um, I did Wet Hot American Summer, and uh, that was obviously a really big deal for me, and, you know, kind of one of the things that, you know, started my career, uh, along with that commercial, which is funny, and they kind of both came out at the same time, so, you know, maybe like a six-month difference, but I'm glad they came out at the time they did. And then another role of yours that really got people talking my wife and I could never miss an episode of The Mick, and you were one of the stars of that show. Did you move out to Los Angeles specifically because of that show? Uh, I moved out to Los Angeles when I was six or seven years old, um, you know, full time. Uh, but I, I had already been living in L.A. when we had shot The Mick. And was that show as much fun to make as it looks like it was? It was so fun to make. I mean, it was really, really hard, uh, and it was really difficult, and it was you know, my biggest challenge, uh, you know, showing up every day and having a lot of really great material that I had to nail. Um, but, you know, it, 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 in the end, it was very fun. And I understand that you're making a movie right now. What can you tell me about that? Our movie is finished. It's premiering um, March 13th in select theaters and March 20th uh, on Hulu. And uh, this project is you know, especially very near and dear to me. Uh, I had just got the audition the day that the Nick wasn't getting picked up, and it was a really big deal that I was a part of it for me because um, it, it was like the dream script. Um, it, it's about a suburban teenager who comes of age um, under the destructive influence of his best friend who is a college dropout, uh, and that's going to be on Hulu March 20th, uh, Select Theaters March 13th. You, I guess, didn't have a lot of time to sit around and be sad about the Mick not being picked up. So I had gotten this audition, and it was the biggest deal to me because it was the first audition where um, I wasn't playing like a goody two shoes or um, you know the bratty kid or you know so, something like I usually do. And I read the first page, and some people say you know the first five lines, you know if you're going to like a script. That's really not true. It's the first line that you, you know you're going to love the script. And just by the first line alone, uh, I fell in love with it. And, you know, on the way to the audition, I found out that we weren't getting picked up. And I was kind of in shock. I and mean, I was crushed. It was, that show was the biggest thing that had ever happened to me. Um, and right before I got into the audition, that's, that's what we found out. And it ruined me. And I kind of had a uh, not-too-great audition. But, you know, in the end, after a couple of tries, it worked out. A lot of people who've seen your work might think of, oh, that's the bully kid. That's the, you know, the bratty kid, the bully kid. And obviously talking to you, you are a relaxed, level-headed guy. Do you spend a lot of your time trying to dispel the fact that you're a brat or a bully? Uh, no. I mean, because I, I love playing that character. It's honestly one of the most fun characters to play. And, uh, you know, people, people in real life are waiting for me to kind of be that character so they can call me out and make me look like, you know, the bad guy or, you know, think I'm that character in real life. But I'm, I'm quite opposite. I'm a very respectful, nice person. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I wouldn't say that I, I, I train myself to not be that character, but I definitely keep an eye out to, you know, be especially nice, especially since I play those kind of characters all the time. 
And the way that you do that character, and granted, it changes from role to role, it reminds me a little bit of Billy Zapka, how he does Johnny Lawrence and Cobra Kai and Karate Kid. Is that something that you're familiar with? Uh, I'm familiar with it, but I, I didn't really uh, pick up on it from that. I kind of, you know, picked up on the, the the way the sarcasm and, you know, the rude way of saying things from, you know, Larry David from Curb. It's my favorite show ever. Um, and I kind of picked it up from that. Uh, but I know of those other characters, but I didn't want to try to study too much of them at first because, you know, I wanted it to be completely new and original in my own way of doing it rather than somebody, you know, you know, thinking like, oh, oh, he's doing, you know, he reminds me so much of this guy from this. I wanted to be the most original version of myself I could be. Besides the movie you were talking about before, I believe you have an upcoming show on TBS called Chad. What can you tell me about that show? Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is really funny. It's a really, really funny show. I'm, you know, really happy I'm working on it. Uh, Chad's going to premiere in 2020. Um, it's on TBS. It's a single cam comedy that stars uh, Nassim Padrad, um, and she plays a 14-year-old, you know, pubescent Persian boy uh, as he navigates his first year through high school. And all he really wants is to become popular. Uh, and, and that's the show. I mean, it's funny enough with her. And then, you know, add the dynamic of her being a 14-year-old boy wanting to be popular and make her 30 times better. Yeah, I remember her from Saturday Night Live and Mulaney, so that sounds like a great show to be watching. So as somebody who's going project to project to project, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of free time for you, but when you do have free time, what do you like to do? See, that's the thing is that um, I usually never had free time up until last year. Last year was my first year when I, where I did have a lot of free time for the first time, and I found myself sitting in my room for – five months doing absolutely nothing because I hated not working. It's, it's the only thing I like to do is, uh, is anything involved in this business. You know, if, if I'm not, if I'm not acting, I want to work on writing. And if I'm not writing, I want to you know, study movies. So, you know, really all I did was watch movies over and over and over again and study TV shows and do what I did to improve myself in the time that, you know, I was, I was not working as much. Uh, which was really helpful, and I glad I, I'm glad I did that um, because you know studying other actors and studying other movies only improves you as an actor too, and as a person sometimes. That's a great answer. So I know you've got a hotel to check into, so I'm going to ask my closing question, and that's Thomas. Any last words for the kids? I love them. Be happy. Do what makes you happy, and that's it. <laughs>